Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. Today, I'm bringing you five of the best base locations on extinction in the sunken forest. Now this first video is going to be aimed for smaller tribes, maybe a solo or a duo. The first couple of spots are starter base locations, and the next three are bigger spots to move into. As well as that, I'm going to give you a little idea of how to build in them, because I know looking at base locations can be a little bit daunting if you don't know how to build. Now let me just throw a disclaimer out there. I'm not the best base builder around, and I'm sure there's a better way to build these bases. But I just want to give you an idea of how I would build them, and an idea of how to lay it out. If you guys enjoy this kind of video, I do have a part 2 of the sunken forest, and that's for more larger tribes. I also have a guide done for the city in extinction. So if you're interested in seeing these kind of videos, let me know, and I'll release that video as well. But anyway, I really hope you guys enjoy, and let's get into it. So our first spot is at about 26.5 latitude, 20 longitude. And it's in the broken leaning obelisk. So we've got the obelisk right in front of us. We'll just look round to show you whereabouts we are. That's the entrance just up there. So you need to head down to the lower part of the obelisk and you'll see a little ledge. And if we go around the back of this little ledge, it's a nice little hardy hole. It's quite a nice little rat hole because even though it's not the best or easiest to defend, it's really out of line of sight, especially being for like one of the main routes around the sunken forest. So technically there's only one entrance to this, but there are little bits that you could see through. So let's see what we can make out of this. So as you can see, we've gone for a very hidden design on this one. This is the area that you can see through, but we just put a wall there, and that blends in really well with the obelisk. We've also just put a wall at the front. We haven't bothered with turrets, because like I've said, this kind of base is more for staying hidden. It's more of a starter base, and if you start putting turrets at the front, people are going to see that you're there. If you do decide you want to use this base as a more permanent spot and you want to put turrets down, I would just make sure you have your tower hanging over this edge, otherwise people can just duck down here with a trend on, get ready to see spin, or just grapple up and throw a dino out to soak your turrets. And it's the same around this corner here as well, people could get very close without getting shot by your turrets, so if you do want to put turrets up, I would put a nice tower outside on that flat ledge. So as we come inside, you can see I've left the bottom floor pretty plain. Like I said, I'll let you design it how you want it. This is just to give you ideas how to build it, how to lay it out. So we've got a generator in there, we've got a couple of volts down the bottom. I've hidden a little cryo fridge around the back there, on the ground. So as we go up onto our first floor, we have our crafting area. So I've chucked down four smithies, a bed, three cam benches and a couple of fabricators. You could definitely get more up here, but like I'm saying, this is a starter base. By the time you're stacked enough to put more things down, it's probably going to be about time to move. So as we climb up to our top floor, you can see straight away we've got our indie forge there. It fits and you can access it. You just need to make sure you don't build your top floor too high that the indie forge sticks out the top when you go outside. This doesn't like this. It fits just nice. Then got a cryo fridge there. Here we can keep all our best tames. Then for the rest of the room up here, I've just chucked a couple of volts down use this to store all our best stuff. Obviously if you can't afford vaults yet, you can use storage boxes, or I'd probably use pests and mortars as you can get more in in such a small area. So the pros of this base is that it's well hidden, there's also plenty of room for a starter base, and it's pretty central in the sunken forest. The cons on the other hand is that it's not easily defendable, not without chucking towers outside and letting everyone know that you're here. And it's a hidden base, but it's not super hidden, so it's not really good enough to stay there forever, unless you want to expand with turrets. Coming in at number two, we're at approximately 14.6, 23.9. So let's just have a little look around and I'll show you whereabouts we are. So I always remember this is like the main island. It's the only real circular island that's surrounded by water. There's the entrance up there. And we're looking for this little waterfall. Now unfortunately this isn't a waterfall like the old island waterfalls where you can't see behind. You can see behind it, but past this little ledge down here, we have a nice little hidden bit. It's hidden behind the rock and kind of behind that little bit of water. It's a very small area, probably only room for a two by one. But this is often where I build for the first day when I'm solo on a server, when I'm waiting to clean the spot that I want. So let's see what we can make of this spot. So as you can see, you can't see anything from the front. And even when you come onto the ledge, you struggle to see it here. Now if you want, you could extend this out an extra foundation, but it just means you might see it slightly from under that rock. So I've sunken the foundations here, it just gives us a little bit more room to work with in there. 
And this is far from my proudest build, let me tell you that. But it works. So we've got our pestle and mortars on the right as soon as we come in. We have two refining forges, both of which we can access, because you can clip into the walls a little bit in this area. A fabricator up top and a smithy. And an extra little pestle and mortar there, just for some storage. You could definitely be more efficient with this spot though, and lay it out better, and you could get more in. But as I say, this is just how I build it quickly when I'm waiting on a PvP server. And all the times I build it, I normally only build it for a night, but I've never been found yet. Because there's so many spots in the sunken forest that people don't really seem to look here. So the pros of this base, it's extremely hidden. You're not on the main path that people usually take around the forest, so there's less traffic around there. But you're very limited on room, so I wouldn't stay there too long. Coming in at number 3, we have a nice little spot that not many people know about really. I haven't used this spot in a long time, but it's a nice little spot, so let's take a little look at it. So we're right on the corner of the map here, that way leads back down into the sunken forest, and this is on the exit. So this is the road leading up, and just up there is how you get out the sunken forest, there's the ramp. So to get to this spot, you want to come down the ramp, and keep following this ramp down into the sunken forest. Eventually you'll come to a left hand bend. On that left hand bend, you'll see this big rib cage and some tree roots. Now down on the right hand side of this tree root, technically there's two entrances but they both lead into the same spot. We have a nice little hole that leads to a nice big open space inside. There's a lot of room in here, but it's also very rough terrain. There isn't really any flat areas. Up to our right however, there is also another little hidey hole. Unfortunately there's not much room up there to get a lot, but I'm sure we could do something with this little area. Unfortunately it is big enough to fit a Tyranodon up. Otherwise it would be a really nice little spot to defend. But anyway, let's see what we can do with this spot. So I've opted to stay not quite so hidden this time. So I've hung a nice little turret tower just above the entrance. And this covers pretty much every angle. The only trouble is with this, there's a lot of room above. So as soon as I had more turrets available, I'd probably consider hanging some from above. But as you can see, in terms of trying to raid this, you can't really get a good angle at this turret tower. It kind of defends from every direction, which is good for us. I would also be concerned about people walking trikes and things up these tree roots. So I'd consider trying to block all them off with things like spikes just to stop people from getting up there. The good thing about this area is that it's not a very common path really. So if you've got enough defences, you could claim as much as you want here for yourself. I often see on servers it blocked off up around there and then down that tunnel there. Blocked that off with hundreds of dino gates and spikes. And then you have big turret towers in the middle. More chandeliers hanging, and you got yourself a pretty good spot. So as we dip inside, you can see we got turrets pointing straight at the entrance, so that when people get past our hanging tower outside, they're not in straight away. They still got to deal with all of this. So these are looking straight up. They're also looking at this back entrance here. So anyone who drops down here is going to get hit hard. Again, I'm not built an entire base. I'm just showing you like a rough layout that you could do. So we've also got a few more turrets underneath this cliff platform. And that looks out over the whole base as well. So the inside of this base, as well as the outside, is pretty well defended here. So I've just tried to put a really basic crafting station down on all this rough terrain here. So we've got three fabricators, four chem benches, three smithies, and a little vault there. I've then done this bottom area of a cliff platform and then foundationed it out. So you get quite a nice flat ground here. Also built a ramp up and we've got room for two indie forges in this little crevice up here. I've also built a little ramp down so we can go underneath this base. Now we could have built the clip platform higher and we've had more room under here, but we've still got a little bit of room for some dino breeding or whatever you want to do down here. So as you can see, there's plenty of room in this base for a duo, three, four man tribe, easy. It all depends what kind of server you're playing on really. All these little ledges you're seeing are awkward for building, but they make perfect little spots to put turrets on. As you can see, we get a replicator in it easy. I've just put my normal generator behind this wall. Obviously you'll be upgrading to a tech generator as soon as you can. And that's going to make it easier for you to put turrets down. Especially outside as well. As we head up further into this little rat hole. All I've done is hung a normal generator up there on a foundation. Boxed it in. And then I've put about four or five turrets down. All this is going to do is inconvenience people and slow them down. Realistically they're not going to be able to grapple up here. They're not going to have armor good enough. And you can't fit anything bigger than a Tyranodon or a Turtle, so they're either going to have to suicide a Tyranodon, or throw a Turtle up it, and then spend the time soaking. So I've had room here just to drop a vault down which you can access, and two cryo fridges, so I would put all my best stuff in here. 
you never know. You might get lucky and people not even know about that little bit. It's quite out of the way. Coming in at number four, we have another nice little spot that I've built in before. So this location's at 29.4, 4.3, and it's right down the side of the map. And it's as you come up one of the streams from the main bit of water in the sunken forest. So as you see down here is the main bit of the sunken forest. There's the fallen obelisk over there. There's a bridge. And we're going to follow this stream all the way up. And just before we get to that waterfall, we're going to look up and left. Now this is an awkward one because it's right next to this base location up above us in that rib cage which is a huge base location and is normally taken by a big tribe. But the spot we want is just before that, up and to the left, there's another little rib cage and there's a nice little crack that you can get inside. Now you can't build directly on these rib cage bits, so we're gonna have to do it with a cliff platform and see what we can make out of it. So we're gonna imagine you're expanded now. You got more turrets ready. So what I've done first is chuck the cliff platform up as high as I can then hung a nice little turret tower from it. Now from this tower, people can only come from below, so it makes it a nice, easy tower to defend from. The main issue I'd say normally with this spot is this little crack down here, because people can get very close to your main base from this spot, but that little hanging turret tower up there should stop that. So as we go up to the main base, you can see I've set it back a little bit. I've put fences all the way around it to stop people from mana dashing into it. And on the fences, we've also chucked down some more turrets. This makes it now a pretty strong base really. I've also chucked these other cliff platforms outside for ideas on areas to build more turret towers if you want to. I would personally build that left one first as it will keep the base more hidden. And if you build that right one there, they have the potential once they've soaked that to get on it to soak the rest of your turrets. So I would build this left one first. So I just want to show you coming from the main part of the forest. As you can see, as you're heading in, the base is really out of sight. You can see that cliff platform up to the top left. But if you didn't have that one, it would be a really difficult thing to see unless you're looking up there. And that's another reason why I like this spot. People just passing through are unlikely to see it up there. So as we come into the base, you can see I've left it pretty plain for you guys to design again. I put a little crafting station over the back here. We've got two indie forges. We've got plenty of room for them. We've got some fabricators, some smithies and some chem benches. I've then chucked another cliff platform up higher. And this is where we'll have all our good stuff. So we've got a replicator up here that we can fit with these. I put three bolts in here that we can all access. We've got a generator down on the cliff platform. We've got our bed and we've also got five cryo fridges. And as you can see, you could fit a lot more stuff here if you wanted to. You could also hang another couple of turrets on this cliff platform if you wanted to to help defend. So as I say, overall, this space is pretty easily defendable. It's pretty well hidden. The only issue is it's not the biggest spot. That being said, there's plenty of room for a duo, trio, or four-man tribe. Maybe even bigger if you had to. Coming in at number five, we have personally my least favorite spot on this list. It's at about 26 lat, nine long. It's a very awkward thing to build in. I personally never built here on a live server, but being an awkward thing to build also makes it a very awkward thing to raid. So let's have a little look at it. So it can be difficult to find. We're gonna look for that rib cage and the blue weird brain things. You'll follow the lead and head just up to the right just before it and we're going to find this nice little vertical spot. It's very small, you can fit a person and you can just about fit a trannon on up it. Once you get through the entrance it does open up a little bit but it's still not very big, it's just very tall. So let's have a little look and see what we can make of this. So we've got two options with this one, we can either stay hidden or put a big turret tower outside. The tower will really help defend as it's an awkward thing to defend but it will also let people know we're here. I've opted to stay hidden on this one. So as you come to the base, you can't see anything. But once you get up inside there, you can see there's a couple of little turrets up there. Now that first turret should shoot you as soon as you come to the entrance. So it's going to keep people from looking up there easy and seeing what's up there. Now I've built all this with a tech generator because it's a lot easier. You can do it with a normal generator, but you're going to struggle a little bit here. So you get past your first turret. Granted, that's going to get blown up pretty easily. But if it shoots someone as soon as they come to that entrance, it can be enough to deter some people and it was obviously going to slow people down. So once you're inside, I've just placed turrets all over the wall. This makes it harder for people to hit. And as you can see, I've hung a little tower up above. This is harder for people to destroy and it's going to be shooting down on them as they're coming up the entrance. On the first floor, I put a little crafting station. So you've got a couple of fabricators, a couple of chem benches, a couple of smithies. And we'll head up to the next floor. And as you can see, I've put my bed and I've put some crop plots for some plant Z. 
where I built it, there wasn't a lot of room on this second floor. And when we come to the top floor, you managed to get an indie forger that you can access, some vaults, some cryo fridges. So again, this is where you're going to be storing all your best stuff. We've got our main generator there. Now this indie forge being here is going to be a little bit awkward if you're not on a server with unlimited weight. So if you're not, you're going to want to readjust this and probably build your indie forge further down. So like I was saying before, these turrets and the hatch frames are probably going to be the ones that save you. Once the first turret gets destroyed lower down, people are going to be grappling up or trying on in and RPGing. That's going to be destroying the lower turrets. But hopefully those ones on the hatch frames are just high enough so that they won't get destroyed easily with an RPG. So your other option with this is to hang yourself a massive turret tower around here. It's going to let people know you're here. But it's a difficult one to raid if it's like this. People are either going to have to build around from the sides or try and quetzal raid you. So if you've got the resources for it, I'd say put yourself a nice little tower down around here. And that way you can stop people from getting too close. Now guys, just one final thing. Extinction is the home of corrupt dinos. And with corrupt dinos come corrupt wyverns. Now corrupt dinos can damage all kinds of structures. So if you don't want what's happening here to happen to you, make sure whenever you build an extinction, you have at least one turret on all targets or wild creatures. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. Like I said, if this helps you out and you're enjoying it, please let me know. And if you guys do like it, I'll release the part two with the bigger bases in the forest. And I'll also release the one in the city. But for now, this has been five of the best base locations on the extinction sunken forest and how to build in them. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.